WGS NDB Going Solo Network welcomes you to You Can Find Love After 50 with your host, dating coach, Lisa Copeland. Lisa's best-selling book on Amazon, The Winning Dating Formula for Women Over 50, has helped women all over the globe find love. Her weekly column in the Huffington Post, which is viewed by millions of readers, along with her unique insight into how to find a quality man, makes her the number one dating coach for women over 50. And now, your host, Lisa Copeland. I'm Lisa Copeland, and you are listening to the You Can Find Love After 50 show on WGSNDB Going Solo Network. And I want to welcome you today. In our show today, I am going to answer some questions our listeners have asked about finding love after 50 and what you can do. Some of the topics that we're going to be talking about today are things like, should I call men? I'm not divorced yet, should I date? I met a great man who dresses awful, what do I do? Can I change him? Or men write me online, how in the world do I answer them? So we're gonna get started right now with the first question, and it is from Colleen. Dear Lisa, I met this really nice man who is so different from me. He dresses terribly, and at times I'm embarrassed to be seen in public with him. We also have different lifestyles, which may become a future problem. We both love to travel, but he travels Super 8 motel style, and I'm more of a Ritz kind of girl. I know you must be thinking, what's the deal here? What pulls me in the way he worships me and just loves and adores me? He'd do anything for me. I have never had this happen before and it feels so amazingly good. I find I'm developing feelings for him, yet my friends think I'm nuts telling me he's beneath me. He's super smart, kind and funny and I enjoy being with him. What should I do? Well, Colleen, this is a really tough thing that happens. First of all, we're trying to fit people into our life with past friends. Our past friends are very used to seeing us with someone else, and they want only what they think is the best for you. I can remember going out with a guy. He and I would have been amazing on an island together because we got along really well but my friends did not like him. They were so adamant that he was wrong for me and they would tell me this. And I know how that feels. It's really tough when friends don't like someone you like. So what do you do about that? Well, sometimes friends do have good insights into people that are right and wrong for you. They can see the chemistry. They can see sometimes what ultimately will be good for you. My friends in many ways were right about this man for me because he was very inflexible. And at times that drove me crazy. And ultimately that is what broke us apart. He also had extreme views. I am more tolerant of extreme views, but that too ultimately broke us apart. And these were things my friends noticed. So listen to your friends Pay attention to the relationship and see if you start noticing some of the things that your friends mention. So let's get into that super eight and Ritz kind of girl you are. This could be a problem because your tastes are very different. The key is asking yourself, is he a Motel 8 kind of guy because he cannot afford the Ritz? Or is he a Motel 8 kind of guy because that's his comfort level? A lot of men will do what you want. And if you say, I really want to go to the Ritz and I'm willing to pay for it, some men will feel emasculated by that. But if you say it from a place of, 
could you do me a favor? Would you be okay if I paid for the Ritz because I so want to go there and it would just make me really happy. If it comes from that place, an emotionally healthy man wants to make you super happy. He will probably say, okay, and he may try and contribute towards it. Now, if this man is the lifestyle of a Motel 8 kind of guy, then there may be a mismatch. And especially if he says, no, I'm not going to the Ritz ever. Because you do want someone who wants to make you happy. If he can't pay for it, you can. But you want someone that's going to make you happy. In terms of him dressing, dressing terribly, we as women like to change men. And men always tell me, oh my God, Lisa, would you tell the women that you talk with that we don't want to be changed? We like who we are. We want to be left alone. So how does this work? Okay, what do you do? Well, number one, personality-wise, you cannot change a man. If a man is abusive, if he is an alcoholic and he hurts you, or if he has extreme opinions, like I mentioned about the guy I went to, you can't change these things. There's certain things you should, you should never tolerate. Never tolerate abuse. Never tolerate when a man puts you down. This is not healthy. But if a man dresses funny, over time you actually can change that. Because again, you go back to, could you do me a favor would you mind wearing this kind of shirt sometime? Because I think you would look so handsome in it. The key is not to come across as critical. And you don't want to do it in the first minute of meeting him. I have a friend who's a guy and he said to me, this woman came into his house and the first words out of her mouth were, oh, you need to change your wallpaper. I can show you how to do that. What he said to her was, I don't think we're a match. And they had been going out for a little bit. He did not want to be changed. Superficial things like clothes over time can be changed, even wallpaper over time. But that's not till you're in a relationship with someone. And you need to either accept a guy for who he is or let him go and start looking for a guy who is exactly what you want. Hope that helps you, Colleen. Okay, our next dear Lisa. My 31-year marriage ended about three months ago. I'm not divorced yet, but I'm thinking about dating. I figure it will be so much easier to get over my ex if someone else is in the picture. I'd love the support, too, from a guy. I already miss having a man around, so I want to get a head start finding my next guy. How do I go about doing this, Kathy? Kathy, you are in a 31-year marriage. You need some time to grieve over the end of a relationship. You might think, oh my God, I'm so done with this. I'm okay. When I came out of a 24-year marriage, I actually took nine months. I did not feel sad I was actually relieved that I was getting divorced. We had really grown apart and it was time. So I was okay. But the thing, what I ended up doing was I really got to know myself again. Because when you've been in a long marriage, your interests, the real you is actually intertwined with that man that you've been with for so long. And you kind of forget about what makes me happy. I remember going on a date, and this was already probably a year, a year and a half after my divorce, with a guy and we're sitting in this place and someone from the local sports team came in. And I remember thinking about how much my husband would have liked, how much he would have liked that. Well, I'm not with my husband anymore and I don't need to think about what he would have liked. What I needed to do was think about what I would like. And that's what you need to do, Kathy. Wait till after the divorce is done. What happened to me when my divorce ended, a 
blueness descended on me because I had to mourn the relationship. It wasn't necessarily about mourning him. It was the end of a very long relationship that was a huge part of my life. And that's what you've had with a 31-year marriage. So when you go out and you date really quickly, one of the things that oftentimes happens is you draw in the same person. He has different hair, different clothes, different job, but he has the same underlying issues. This is something huge I help women with in a quality man template. I show them how to recognize the patterns of men they're attracted to because we're usually healing something from our family of origin in the relationships we choose. And when clients create their quality man template with the pattern chart in it, it is such an aha moment for them because they recognize, oh my God, I dated the same guy over and over again. And you have to dig deep to do this. I know you miss having a man around, but you don't want to replace someone else. You need to really get yourself in a place where you know yourself again and where you recognize what went wrong in the relationship so you don't re-attract that again, okay? Give yourself some time. This is a really special time. I had a friend tell me after a breakup, she said, I know you're sad. I know you miss having the guy around, but enjoy this time. It's something you so rarely have enjoy it. Really have fun. You don't have to worry about someone else. You can do anything you want. And it's really a freeing feeling. So I urge you to take that time and to hold off. So if you are getting out there dating, one of the things I want to suggest that you do, and this is for everyone, is I have a great free report on my site called the five little known secrets for finding quality man. Check it out because it really is going to help you get some ideas of where to find quality men in your life. You can find it on findaqualityman.com. Again, that's the five little known secrets for finding quality men at findaqualityman.com. And Kathy, this would be a great report for you so that when you are ready... Or as you're out there looking, you'll know places to go. Also, I'll be sending you blogs every week filled with so much advice. I have women write to me all the time telling me how much these blogs mean to them and how much they really help them. And I know they can help you too with finding love after 50. So I want to remind you that you are listening to the You Can Find Love After 50 show. I'm Lisa Copeland, your host on WGSNDB Going Solo Network. So let's move on to our next question. Dear Lisa, I've had men write me online and I just don't know how to answer them. Any suggestions? Margie. Margie, this is a great question. When men write to you online, oftentimes what happens is we start telling them more and more about our lives and you become a pen pal to them and you really don't want that. What you want to do is the goal when a man writes you, exchange like five to ten emails back and forth maximum, short and sweet. This is when you want to get into your flirting skills. I teach women flirting all the time. Flirting is about being light and airy, not space head, not space cadetti, but airy. Because what you want is you want to intrigue a man and you want to seem happy and fun. Men love happy, fun, passionate women. So when a man writes you and says, I liked your profile, I think you're really interesting. Now, let me tell you, that is a very hard email to write back to you. And I don't want you ever doing that with a man. What you want to do whenever you write to a man, end it with a question because you need to give them something to answer. So let's say the man says to you, love your picture. Where were you? Now you could say, well, I was with my friend at this restaurant and we had the best dinner and it was so wonderful. Not... You don't want to say that. That is so boring. So what you want to say is, funny you should ask. Great restaurant, 
great food. One of the best times I had with a friend of mine. Are you a lover of good food? Short, sweet, and sassy. That's how you want to write men back. And if you're not sure, these are the kinds of things I help my clients with. Get in touch with me at lisa at findequalityman.com and we can talk about what it is that will help you to get your dating life out of a rut or jump started. And that's for everyone on this call. Feel free to write to me and, uh, and apply for a 30 minute complimentary session with me to talk about your dating life. And we'll talk about what's going on, what's stopping you and how I can help you. You're going to learn so much about yourself. You can find that on my site as well at findequalityman.com and just click on the coaching tab and fill out that form. Okie dokie, let's move on to our next question. Hi, Lisa. I'm going on divorce number two. First time I was married 21 years. Now I've been married three out of a nine year relationship. My current husband walked out without warning. I know it's too soon to date as the divorce is barely in process and we were back and forth for a while trying to save it. I made the mistake of finding my very first boyfriend from high school on Facebook. Over the last 30 years, he has tried to apologize for dumping me to date one of my good friends. Now he is literally throwing himself at my feet. He's successful in business, which is nice for any woman to want to date. He's been through three marriages. As he says, none ever took my place. He's begging me to let him make it right and would do anything for me. Here's the problem. I don't feel any physical attraction to him anymore. And that is important to me. I am still sexually attracted to my soon to be ex, although I'm not acting on that. They are just very different. And my old boyfriend, although he could make these older years comfortable, my current husband did not contribute to the household bills, but loved nice things. And I got tired of working and paying for everything and got bitchy. I am just not attracted nor ready to date yet. So my old high school boyfriend won't take no for an answer. And when I told him no, it's like I devastated him. Should I let this catch go or give him a chance? Thanks so much, Gina. Gina, you have said it yourself. Your instincts are telling you, you are not ready to date. And you need to be clear with this man that the only thing you're capable of right now is being friends with him. So how do you do this? As women, we were taught to be nice to everyone. We have such a hard time saying how we really feel. What really helped me be able to tell people how I felt was using these words. I so appreciate that you want to create a romantic relationship with me, but I feel uncomfortable doing that right now. And I would feel so much more comfortable just being friends. I love your support. I love talking with you. And I love sharing the past stories we've shared together and seeing if there's any current ones now. But right now, I feel that I am not ready to be in a relationship. Now, for everyone out there, in that paragraph I just gave to Gina, I used words, I feel, or I feel uncomfortable. One of the great things about doing that is it softens you. You're coming from your heart. You're asking a man to step up and be your hero and honor you. And when a man doesn't, or a man makes it all about him, like this man did to Gina when he was devastated, when she said, no, I, I'm not interested right now. This may not be the right man for you. When we're in the middle of a divorce, Having someone kind of dote on us is awesome and amazing. It feels great. It makes us feel like we're still desirable. But it is so important, like I mentioned earlier, to heal yourself. Having men as, having men as friends at this time is a fantastic thing too. Because it is nice to be around male energy. But trust your instincts. This is for any situation anyone is in. Trust your instincts is 
this man a good match for me? Is something going on here? Does he have any of my deal breakers? And trust how you're feeling because your instincts will tell you. And if your instincts say, I'm not ready to date, that's how I was. After my 24-year marriage, after my three-year marriage, I knew I wasn't ready to date. I wanted to get myself back. And I remember checking in with myself and going, am I ready to date? And I would hear, no. Nope. And then all of a sudden, one day, I was ready. And that means that I had healed. And that is what's important. You want to heal all those feelings you're feeling before you go out and get involved with someone else. Okay, let's move on to a question from Annie. Dear Lisa, a couple of weeks ago, I met this great guy through a mutual friend at a party. We talked for about an hour and then exchanged numbers. We had such a nice conversation, but he didn't call me, so I decided to call him. After talking for about an hour, we decided to meet for drinks and had a really nice time. He said he'd call, but it's been over a week and he still hasn't. Should I call him again? Because I really like him. Annie. So Annie, one of the things you really want to understand about men is they love to pursue you. The thing is, is they need you to let them know it's safe to pursue you. When you're calling a man, Of course, a man will go out with you if he doesn't have something else to do. But that doesn't mean he likes you or wants to go out with you again. And oftentimes when a man says, I'll call you, he's not going to call. He just doesn't want to hurt you. The thing is, is if you exchange those numbers and he didn't call, you needed to let it go. The only thing you could have said, there's only one thing you could have done. You actually could have written a text the next day and you could have just said, had so much fun talking with you last night. Would love to finish that conversation about blank, 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 whatever it was that you had a good time talking about. That is the only thing you can do. You're leaving him to ask you out if he's interested. And if he's not, he'll be polite. He'll take your number. It doesn't mean he'll call and you don't want to pursue him. If you'd love to have your questions answered on one of my Dear Lisa shows, all you have to do is write to me at lisa at findaqualityman.com. Write that you heard me on the radio and that you would love if I would answer one of your questions and then just put it out there and I'll answer it on a future show. Okay, we're going to keep going here. Dear Lisa, it has been hard to find a date. The men who contact me seem to be old or disabled, and it seems they just want me to take care of them. I'm very self-sufficient, I'm independent, and I'm not looking to take care of anyone, nor do I want them to take care of me. But what I would like to find is someone to enjoy my life with. I don't date men who are older than me, preferring them younger. Though it seems lately all I get is older men contacting me who are sexually washed up. I'm not ready to give up my sex. What do I do? Tina. Oh, Tina. It's great that you're self-sufficient and independent and not looking for someone to take care of you or for you to take care of someone. What that can come across as to men is you just don't need a man that you can just do it all. If you want a man in your life, you got to make some space for him. You'd want to learn how to receive from men. Another issue you bring up in here is about being sexually washed up that men are. Hey, both sexes have issues as we age. And men sometimes, even though they cannot have full intercourse with you, they can be fantastic lovers and many ways. I've had women tell me that this was a deal breaker for them. And then they met a guy that they fell in love with. And all of a sudden, they're in a sexual relationship with them. And the man is pleasing them to no end. And he's very attentive and wants to do everything for her. And it turns out it's a great relationship. And they recognize Maybe I needed to look at sex from a different point of view, that maybe I can still be sexually satisfied, but it doesn't have to be full intercourse. So why are older men writing you? 
Well, that happens to all women because when you're in your 50s, men in your 60s like you because to them, you represent youth, men in your 70s like women that are in their 60s, and it goes along the line. The thing is, there are a lot of men out there who will love you for your age, who are younger and are your age as well. The key is you want to have a great picture online and you want to have a profile that gets men that you like or that you would like to date. It needs to trigger them to write to you. So it's very possible that both of these are a little skewed and that's why you're not attracting good men. The other thing I want you to do, and this is for everyone as well, everything I'm talking about today on today on today's show is for everyone. You want to visualize and get really clear on that man that you want because we need to be in the vibration of what we want to attract what we want. So many women are in the vibration of there's no one out there. I know what I don't want. And when you know what you don't want and that's all you talk about, that's exactly who you attract. Or if you are always saying there are no good men out there, you're right because your vibration is saying, bring me all the men that aren't good. So it's really important to get super clear on what, who it is you want and what kind of qualities you want, what kind of values you want them to share with you. And this is going to help you start to attract men that might be a better fit for you. Okay, for our last question, dear Lisa, frankly, I've stopped dating and rarely leave my home anymore. I was told just recently that I have to be open to being vulnerable and getting hurt to find the right man. Is this true? Barbara. First of all, Barbara, if you have stopped dating and rarely leave home anymore, that means a light has somewhat died inside of you. Your passion is gone. Your glow that men are so attracted to is gone. My first suggestion would be for you to go out there and get some help from a professional who can help you reopen your heart and be ready for love again. But I do want to talk about the vulnerability and getting hurt. Vulnerability is about needing help. It's about coming from your heart, not your head. Oftentimes we come from our head and we say, I think this versus I feel this. Thinking and believing is intellectually figuring things out. Feeling is feeling from your heart. Men love the tenderness of your heart. So when you say to a man, I feel really sad or I feel angry, he knows that you're vulnerable and he's going to say to you, how can I help you? Whereas if you say to a man, my friend Josie did this to me and I am so angry, he doesn't know what it is you're asking of him to help you with. And you may just be venting, but a man's whole antenna is there thinking, what do I need to fix? What do I need to do to make her happy? Also, he needs direction about your feelings. You could be crying in front of a man who is focused on doing something else. He's single focused on fixing something else for you. And you'll stand there and cry and he won't even see it. You go, what's wrong with this guy? Why can't he see I'm in tears? Men need direction for how you're feeling. That is why you need to always say, I feel. Anytime we're going to enter into a relationship, we do risk being hurt. The key is to know how to deal with men. And I teach women this all the time. And you can read a lot about men in my book on Amazon called The Winning Dating Formula for Women Over 50 by Lisa Copeland. It is so worth really starting to understand men and what it does mean to be vulnerable. It's an opening of your heart and of coming from your heart. Well, our time is up. It's been so much fun talking with you on our show. We're going to be covering all kinds of topics in the future. If there's topics that you'd like to hear more about, let me know that as well. I would love to share more information with you about finding love after 50. I found it. I know the difference it's made in my life and the lives of my clients. 
I'd love to have that for you too. So I'm Lisa Copeland, the host of You Can Find Love After 50 show on the WGSNDB Going Solo Network. And I'll talk to you next time.